Good afternoon. Natural disasters, they're inevitable, some are unavoidable, and some are unpredictable. Whether it's a tornado in Oklahoma, a wildfire in Alberta, or a, an earthquake and tsunami here at home in Japan, um, it's a really a test to human ingenuity and innovation for um, uh, we as a society to uh, build and engineer structures and buildings and plan effective evacuations in order to mitigate the impact and damage and loss of a natural disaster. And constructing a seawall is no exception. A seawall is a concrete embankment, very large, very wide, and very tall concrete structure that can, with, uh, that can uh, withstand an impending large tsunami wave. And um, here at home in Tokyo in 2011, I'm sure we all know the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami uh, caused 16,000, uh, uh, nearly 16,000 lives to uh, be lost and nearly 122,000 buildings to be completely destroyed. So the research hypothesis can be simplified into two questions. Simply, were seawalls effective for evacuations, um, uh, evacuation, it, it, to influence evacuation behavior? And are seawalls imposing a false sense of security on people's departure choices? And the data set we received from the federal government was from the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism. 10,000 data points for, uh, from ev evacuees of the earthquake, survivors, of course, who, um, uh, where, we can, uh, where we collected information based on everybody's uh, evacuation behavior and uh, influence choices based on where they uh, went point by point by point by point after 1446, the fateful time when the earthquake had hit. And the graphs are very telling. Um, uh, for example, uh, evacuees who hailed from cities with an effective seawall. And an effective seawall is, can be defined as when the federal government issues a tsunami warning of a certain wave height, uh, an evacuee can determine, hey, our wave height uh, is smaller than our seawall, and I think we can ride this one out a bit. So you'll see there, there are 10% difference in some places for those who decided to evacuate later based on the fact that they had a seawall. And the next graph is very telling because the survey also explicitly asked, did you delay your evacuation because a seawall was present in their city? Yes, by many minutes from 1446, yes. Many people did evacuate later because there's a seawall is present. And although these are initial results, the trends do show that um, uh, this uh, information is promising. What can we do with these findings? What are the policy implications with this research? We can present to a prefectural government, for example, that, hey, uh, do we need to spend all this money on constructing more seawalls? Billions of US dollars, for example. Or is the money better off being spent on relocating critical infrastructure and people away from inundation risk zones? These are the questions we're asking and lives depend on it. Thank you very much.